Good to get it installed up. I will say that so, it's, it is very uh, much a sense of it's suggestive seating position here. A, a D-type Jag, of course, was a racing Jag, had only one seat. Yep. So in order to make it a road car, they added a passenger seat, which is kind of a, like a three-quarter seat, you know, or a heat seat. It's, it's really not for a full adult. But I don't mind, to be honest. Right. I can handle that. You ready? Yes. <laughs> collectible cars in the world uh, because it is actually a racing car for the street and they only made 16. Yes. And this one obviously has a little bit of uh, historical significance to it with its previous owner. Absolutely. Which I, makes it maybe a little more rarer than some of the other. Well it is. I, I, this, this car was actually nicknamed the Green Rat by Steve McQueen. So it's been very well known. It's also the car that he got into all sorts of trouble in. Yeah, I understood there was a, a bounty of sorts put in his head by the uh, local California Highway Patrol to make sure that uh, anyone caught him would uh, get a steak dinner. Is that right? That's correct. And how many steak dinners were given out? None. He was never caught. Never caught. But I, I will say, um, his time, his days were numbered of being caught. So for, for that reason, he, uh, I'm trying to get my wallet out here to get my pass. For that reason, he uh, sold the car. Okay. Uh, and he was without it for a few years. Uh, can you swipe that for me? Absolutely. We're lucky that we uh, were licensed to sell uh, the official Steve McQueen uh, Le Mans jacket. And then people have asked for you, so a quick smile for the camera. Look at that. See, there's a happy man. Steve McQueen obviously used to use this on the back. 
back roads of the Hollywood Hills around Mount Holland and whatnot, where he was famous for maybe going a little bit above the speed limit. He was famous for going a little above the speed limit and, and also famous for his favorite time to drive was 2 and 3 in the morning. Okay. So, of course, he would wake up all his neighbors every time he left the house. So, he's not that popular. <laughs> Greg, we're doing our best to try and find these twisty roads, but we'll see what we can do here in Los Angeles for traffic. And course corrected, it is the J Steve McQueen Jaguar XKSS. You know, it's interesting. Um, I have also the, uh, I've been fortunate enough to, um, to have lunch several times with uh, Steve McQueen's first wife, his ex-wife, uh, Neil Adams McQueen. She and Steve were married for, I think, about 15 years, so she had a lot of experience riding in his car. And she used to say that he used to wake her up at 2 o'clock in the morning and say, Come on, Neil, let's go out for a spin. <laughs> so... Uh, she would put on her bathrobe, she would be in uh, pajamas, pajamas, floppy slippers and a bathrobe and they'd go out for gallivanting around the hills. Gallivanting around the hills. Now then, obviously you're a connoisseur of Steve McQueen's work. Well, I wouldn't say connoisseur, I, I, I guess I would say an admirer. Admirer, Steve. okay, just an admirer. Now, which is your favorite Steve McQueen movie then? Oh, see, I asked some tough questions here, Steve. Yeah, well, yeah, you know, it, it's it's funny. I I enjoy, of course, Bullet. Yes. For its chase scenes, uh, I enjoy. Uh, and actually, I enjoy I enjoyed his last movie, which kind of got banned. Uh, he played a bounty hunter. who was called the Hunter. Yes. And uh, in the movie, he's a toy collector, which I am too. So that was pretty. Point is 
great tune, Magnificent Seven. Oh yes, it was a wonderful tune. If you like westerns, it's fantastic. I will say that it, I think the original slightly edges the remake. I do too. Although the remake, give this credit, but uh, yes, I think the original just pips it. It's interesting, uh, James, also this car does not have a cooling fan. It does not. Well, racing cars never needed a cooling fan. No, why would it be less than 60 right? miles now? That's right. So uh, we're uh, heading back and getting a little warm because sure. of the traffic and things like that. Sure, and obviously Steve McQueen that went very often go very less than 60 miles now. <laughs> That's true. Dry sump system, oil reservoir here. Yep. And then obviously we do the maintenance here in the museum. Is there anything particularly difficult about this car? It makes it a challenge? No, I, I, I think it's it's uh, uh, it's an interesting car to work on. Any English car is interesting, and any English car is challenging. Okay. James, so uh, let me just put it that way. But no, I mean they are now. Um, there were nine chassis that they were going to uh, build for burned up in a fire in 1957. Mm -hmm. So they have just recently, as of uh, last year, uh, remanufactured those nine Jaguars. So Jaguar has tooled up, so it actually uh, makes every single part for this car now. Uh, and they've made several spares, so uh, I think that'll, uh, that'll help us out. I hope they'll catch the 1955. Yeah, well, that would be nice, wouldn't it? But highly doubt that. Sure. Well, in that case, we'd like to say thank you again to Mr. Daniel Bornstein for driving today in our first pilot episode here. If you liked it, we'd love to hear your comments. Uh, we'd love to hear your support. Make sure to give us a like. Obviously, tell your friends about the Peterson. Try and find us on Facebook. Find us on Instagram. Find us on Twitter. We're all there. Or Peter School Museum or Peter School underscore Museum. And remember, the jacket, the lovely Steve McQueen on my jacket that Dana is wearing is it available in the Peterson School. <laughs>
the photo studio.